Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Zilke Ackerman. I'm the director of the History of Science Museum. That is from where you are sitting. The image, uh, second image on the left, uh, taken on my windowsill. Uh, it's a rather cool office. Um, so, um, what are we doing? Astrolabe Explorer, uh, you may think, oh God, not another catalogue, another database. It's going to die somewhere and be half finished. And that's exactly the problem. Uh, with the collection we are working on, we just happen to have the finest collection of astrolabes uh, from Europe and the Islamic world, anywhere in the world. Uh, we could, of course, be tempted to write a catalogue for just that collection, but we're far more interested in an international context. We're interested in any kind of artefact that is vaguely, loosely related to astrolabes. But at the same time, we don't want to hand over ownerships. We want to, don't want somebody to go out there on, on uh, Wikipedia and rewrite the history of astrolabes. Um, we want to bring everybody who is in any way able to contribute together. So we want to not create new information, but link it. And how do we do that? And that is where the Hollywood version, the drums <laughs> set in. <laughs> so my challenge, should I, my mission, should I choose to accept it? is to link together data about astrolabes from multiple different collections. Not just to link together collections data, but other kinds of resources which are interesting for research in that topic. So this is the electronic version of a book by one of the astrolabe makers. It's kind of a manual that tells you what to do with the instruments he creates. This is a painting from a, an art collection in another museum. Uh, and this is another of the instrument makers. And you see he's pretty good at, ge at geometry and he wants you to know it. <laughs> and uh, this is some of the correspondence of another instrument maker in the Early Modern Letters Online project here, here in Oxford, which has the correspondence of uh, the historic intellectuals. So we want to combine uh, collections data, but these other types, biographical, uh, bibliographic, geographical, art collection data, in one platform. So what tool can we use that can do that easily and sustainably and for free? Well, we're using Wikidata, which is part of the family of Wikipedia projects. I emphasize we're not using Wikipedia. Wikipedia articles we're not using at all, we're not editing, uh, really. We're using a kind of an authority hub, a database that's grown out of Wikipedia and a bunch of other information sources. But this is hosted by a charity, it's a long-term project, like Wikipedia is. And its, its selling point is it can hold these different kinds of data, it can hold tree of life data, it can hold geographical data, and it already has lots of it. It's vast. It has millions of people, historical figures from every culture and era, including some scientific instrument makers. Uh, it has millions of locations with latitudes and longitudes you can build maps with. Uh, you already use Wikidata, even if you don't realise it, because those knowledge graph boxes on a Google search that pop up next to your search with key facts about the thing you're searching for, those are, are driven from Wikidata, amongst other things. Uh, the voice assistant use it, Siri, Cortana, OK Google, all those are querying Wikidata as well as other sources. Uh, and this is free in the sense of no restrictions on reuse. So you can put in a data set, aggregate that with other data, get the enriched data set out and do anything with that, put that anywhere, build stuff with it. Uh, no restrictions. And it's the Wikipedia model of anyone can edit, but anyone can audit and review and maybe undo other people's edits. Uh, part of, the, of making it editable by anyone is making it massively multilingual. And it is. So yeah, Google, if you're a Googled user, you're already a Wikidata user. And it is massively multilingual, Wikidata. So the facts being edited are represented in a language-independent way, but people get labels in their own human language. I, editing it in English, see instance of. Someone else in German sees ist ein, and so on for hundreds of other languages. So we have people in our community who speak Russian, who speak Arabic, who speak Spanish, but we can collaborate on the same model, the same data set. So, the Museum of the History of Science at Oxford and the Science Museum in London and some individual researchers have shared data, surface level data, about astrolabes in their collections. Um, and, uh, and thank you very much for sharing uh, individual images to kind of act as thumbnails to make the, the visualizations more useful. 
And you may ask, well, if anyone can edit it, does it get vandalised? And we could test that empirically. We can ask the data for, um, say, a review of all edits made to Astrolabe records over a particular time period, the past month. And that's, uh, this is the beginning of one of those reports. So we can see what's happened, and this data's been up a few months, and we can see, yes, people did edit it. People did add in extra detail that was that was there in the original catalogue but not in the in Wikidata, or people have just added entirely uh, new records for astrolabes that they're particularly interested in, maybe they've published about. So they've enriched, they've not vandalised. As a result of that, there is a query interface where if you know the data query language, you can go in and put specific questions. So this is, um, give me astrolabes that are made of brass and give me the result in the form of an image gallery. And that's what you get, that's what those are. Or give me places in Europe where astrolabes are known to have been assembled. Uh, and you get the interactive map. That sounds a bit geeky, doesn't it? Because not everybody knows query language or data modelling. What about the rest of us? That's why we've built a web application which has these kinds of queries built into them and interrelated to each other. And you navigate this just by going to this website and clicking about on what seems interesting. So we've got a map view, we've got a timeline view, uh, and these are all interlinked. We've got those uh, biographical details, and people got like profiles of the instrument makers with all kinds of uh, biographical sources that we've been talking about connected. And this application shows you astrolabes and parts of astrolabes because there is a line of code in it that specifies astrolabes. If we change that line of code and make some cosmetic changes, obviously, this could be an application for browsing any other kind of thing that's shared across lots of, lots of museum collections and has a resource related to it. So thank you very much. I hope there's questions. Thank you.